Well, there it is, Jim. Yep, there it is. And our puppy, Raven. They match. They do match. We like to coordinate here. Everyone's been wondering if we got a new truck. They've been, I've been dropping hints in the background. We needed something that yep. could pull this kid steer, yeah? We had too much stuff that couldn't be pulled. Yes. But, what's one thing you need when you're going to be pulling? Uh, a hitch. A hitch. Yeah. A hitch. Obviously. And I was Lots looking, I was looking online. Hello, everybody. Hello. I was looking online on YouTube and I saw plenty of hitches out there. But Gen Y, ba-boom, was like the biggest, most baller hitch I could see. They've got lots of different models of hitches. There's obviously the website. I'll leave a link in the video description box. But I got a few different things I knew that we would need. Because this is a 3500 oh, diesel. Oh, hear that. That's just the shank. Wait, wait, give me a second. Just do my like country croc arms. <laughs> I can't believe it's not heavier. Oh my god, seriously. It's actually huge. That's that is oh, that weighty. Is purple tunnel waiting for. So then I knew because because we got the six inch BDS lift on this big boy uh, that we were going to need another step, even though it's got a step in the tail. So I got a nice serrated step where if we're drinking too much or a trip, we can bust our face off of this and yeah, uh, it's a good reminder. Good get lesson. get a good you know deal on some plastic surgery possibly. Oh, right. Since you're there, there you're mine as well. There's always a plus to anything, right? I like that attitude. So we need to unwrap this, but uh, there's this box here, and then there's the yeah. hitch. Like this, this is, is the just, actual hitch. So what's this then? This is those are the support bars <laughs> to support your hitch because this your is box. a drop hitch. So they say if you take the the center point of your hitch down to the ground minus 14 inches off of that, that is the size of drop you should have on your hitch. Ours is 31 inches mm -hmm. minus the 14. So we got a huge drop hitch. Their maximum duty hitch. So I gotta somehow cut this out of here because surgery weighs like a hundred pounds. <laughs> Monster hitch. Wow. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Mega duty. That's what it there we go. Uh, I don't even know if I can say duty on YouTube anymore. So, okay, I obviously got to get a blade mm -hmm. and get all this protection off, as sexy as it is. Hearing, hearing plastic squeak. Well, maybe here, getting close for the guys yeah. that really, they just want to hear. I got the power mm -hmm. saw going on in the background, mm -hmm. right? And then we're mm -hmm. unwrapping a hitch. Plastic stretching. Mm. Those are some big black Whoa. balls. Ugh. Decent. Indubitably. Oh, I am. Come around here. So you can see here, American built. This is the model number, the GH-2 or the 626. I'll link all the parts I used here today in the video description box so you can find it. This is a 15 inch drop hitch. First of all, the pintle and the two pins, which means uh, I've got a generator here that has a pintle hitch, which will mean I can easily take that to go get it serviced now before it was a big pain in the butt. Uh, tongue weight capacity of 300 or 3,000 pounds. Uh, and this is for a two and a half, two and a half inch receiver hitch. So there is your all for all the nerds out there that want to know everything about it. There it goes. Let's get all this out of the way. Really? Okay, so most of the stuff is already unboxed or unwrapped. Look at this. They even cut Gen Y right into the metal. Can you imagine smashing your face or your shin off of that? I'd rather we're, not. We're, we're in Canada. It is like, what, snowy at least seven months of the year. So that's why I got Do this. not put your tongue on that. Well, it, it's powder coated. It should be okay. <laughs> I don't suggest doing it anyway. Uh, so lots of adjustable spots on this one. We get one, two, three, four, five, six different adjustable spots. This will be for the pintle uh, part of the hitch right here. Slides out, which will close off against the top of the ball. Really cool. Yes, right? This Check this out. Well, cool. obviously this would be backwards, so it would be hitched in like that. And then if you had your drop right here, you see? And so it would go over and basically that locks it into place. So 
if you do have a ring, it can easily be pulled and maneuvered around, right? So that's the whole point of this little pintle hitch right there. So let's go ahead and put this in the hitch of my, or in the receiver of the truck. Start seeing how this should start working out. You can hear how heavy it is, eh? Oh yeah, you get wonder. a lot of effort. Ugh. Okay, so down. Look at this huge. Slide it into the receiver. Look at that. That almost looks like I might have one that's just one too long. I wonder. Look at one, two, three, four, five, six different spots, which means this step could basically fit in any place I want it. It's a nice step, man. Wow. Right? Here's that pintle part if I wanted it. So if I did have the pintle, it could just hook right there, no problem. Or I can just use a pin, keep that right out of place like that. But you know what I was thinking of as soon as I thought about this is this Denali has like one of those double steps, right? Or the double tailgate where it kind of splits in two. One and then two, right? And so I was mm -hmm. kind of expecting that that would clear, but it doesn't. This actually hits right on the uh, plastic right here and it puts it at a bit of an angle. So if you put any pressure on that, you're gonna end up putting like a dent in the plastic up here. So that's something for me to keep in mind. Just a normal tailgate obviously would work fine, but then you'd have to use this to step up and get up mm -hmm. like that. So I wonder if that was totally worth it, getting that step, but it's better to have a step in the winter than not to have a step in my opinion. Uh, and then on top of it all, like if you're pulling something super heavy with this, You'd be wondering, like, with a, such a severe drop to here, like, wouldn't there be a lot of stress in this area? And Gen Y has already, you guys saw there's a third mm. box here. Look at this. <laughs> These are stabilizer bars. So this will tow, I believe it is, up to 21,000 pounds. Just this hitch alone. These bars actually have to either have a mount made or you can drill them right into the frame of your truck. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that yet or which, which avenue I'm going to go. I'll have a seat to see how they, they line up. But that means if you're going to keep it in permanently. Somebody like me where I'm only towing like once in a while, I want to make sure to have these removable so I don't have to have it on there all the time. Then I don't have to worry about my tailgate. Plus, that's a huge hitch, hitch to have dropped off the back of your truck. All these things I brought in just to make sure I could make the camper, which has torsion bars to it, which means I had to get the GH0352 weight distribution shank. So here is uh, the piece I already had from my old hitch, came off here. Now I can kind of just get it to line up so my torsion bars or sway control system will work on my camper no problem. But that's what you get if you're going to get a big lifted truck, you got to get yourself a big hitch. So I'm going to put away the stabilizer bars for now because I don't need to pull anything super ultra heavy. Uh, just pulling a uh, twin axle uh, uh, dump trailer right now, just getting rid of some old junk from around the yard. Uh, so the drop hitch will be awesome for that. I'll finally be able to hook up. Let's look at the final product. Here is my trailer. Of course, I want to let ride it level, but it's a little lower right now. It looks like it's angled up, but it's not. It's just the angle that you can see here. Everything is all flat, and in fact, it's slightly lower in the front. Let's get this backed up here. I bet I could raise that one more even. Let's just see how easy this will be. It just looks like it wants to be one more.
Paint or no paint, I don't care. Grease them balls. Crisscross. Okay, so I was just inspecting my setup. I could still bring up my leg a little bit more here, but one thing I was looking at was this step and these chains. And although I think this would totally clear, I think it would just be best to take the step out, especially when I'm traveling. It's not like I need to be walking on anything there. I could easily take this out like that and then have no issue with clearance whatsoever. Beautiful. Brake cable is all done. Crisscross, check, everything done. Step can go in the back of the truck. So there you have it. I'm sure I'll have about a thousand pe people telling me I could have hooked it up differently or safer. But uh, that is hooked and ready to go. Um, next time I'll look at doing those stabilizer bars uh, just for this drop hitch itself. Look at that, I think it has plenty of clearance. It's exactly the same amount of clearance my, uh, my leg uh, on that trailer would have. So I don't really think it's a big deal. Probably one too long. I could have had one just a little bit shorter, but let me know what you guys think of the Gen Y hitch. They do have some great torsion products out there as well. I may investigate that in the future, but to haul around the camper and to do RC adventures, wouldn't that be awesome, hey? Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Of course, as always, let me get into the sun. Ah. Oh. That's better. That's what it's all about. The summer, sun, camping, family, pulling trailers. Leave me a like click. If you guys went to check out Gen Y, also comment down below. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.